Good, man. All right, we, um, before we get going here, I just want to say uh, the swamp was electric again. You know, can't express our gratitude enough. You know, on behalf of our team, staff, the entire organization, it was electric again. We're very thankful for the support. Uh, and certainly, even for South Florida this coming weekend, we've got just a handful of tickets left. So, um, really positive uh, and certainly impact the game in a great way. You know, we didn't get the result that we wanted. Um, and I think that that presents a, an opportunity, right? I think it's part of the story of this team. It's part of the story of some of the individual players on our team. Um, I think when you get presented with struggle, when you fail, when you lose, when you make mistakes, uh, when you're presented with challenges and adversity in life, I think that there, there's opportunity. And it's important that we operate in truth um, that we keep it technical, you know, we try to help the players maintain perspective. Um, and I think that it's very important that you take full advantage of the things that come with an experience like this. Gives you a chance to recenter uh, and certainly evaluate where you're at as a team. Um, so, you know, it's important to adjust, to adapt, to evolve. Uh, and certainly I've seen just in a few days here, this group is sticking together. There's a certain loyalty that comes with this game. Uh, and I love how this group wants to do their job for the team. They want to do it better for the team. So, you know, I think the big focus for our team is to get consumed with improvement, right? With our process, our routine and execution, right? How can we improve uh, in terms of how we execute? So. You know, I challenge the staff to let's do our best work for the players, right? The level of detail that we can offer the players uh, throughout the week, meetings, walkthroughs, and practice, uh, and try to position in a better place um, as we approach Saturday. So South Florida comes to town, very familiar with Jeff Scott uh, as he's building a program, obviously inherited a little bit of a tough dynamic there being year one in COVID, but you know, Jeff's a bright young coach, and his team is playing extremely hard. Um, you can see the effort, effort. You can see the toughness, the week one to two improvement, and certainly some of the changes they've made on the staff uh, from a defensive standpoint. So Jeff's growing that program up, and certainly you can see it on the film. Tons of respect for what he's doing and how they're doing it. So they've got some really good players. You know, I think there's probably 15 transfers in the two deep to go along with a lot of really good returning players here. So uh, there'll be a lot of challenges that come with playing South Florida. What questions do we have here? So, Billy, you guys obviously strive to win them all, and that, but are growing pains <coughs> like the other night somewhat inevitable when you're in a rebuild like this first year? Well, you don't, you know, you, you don't get them back. You know, I think that's, it's what losing does to you, right? It, it makes you very aware that you don't get back. You know, there's no redos. You don't get go back and fix those things, right? So it causes you to have a different perspective, you know, I think as a coach and as a player, you know, and I think everybody in the organization taking ownership of their role, maybe what could have I, I done better throughout the week that could have impacted the uh, outcome. So. You know, it's critical that you learn from mistakes, right? I think it's critical that you have integrity, that you tell the truth uh, and you make the necessary changes, right? So, and then, hey, look, you got to turn the page. You know, I think uh, part of this game is uh, it teaches you a lot of lessons and quickly uh, you've got to get focused on the next task and, and certainly that's what we're going to try to do. Did you Say hear that again. Anthony, did you hear him speak after the game? I did not. Because he took an incredible amount of accountability for the, for the loss. How do you take that and translate that into an improvement? Well, I think it just shows you what type of kid you're dealing with here. You know, I mean, this is a guy who's got character. Um, 
one of Anthony's special traits is he is a loyal guy. You're talking about a guy that really uh, has a, a heart to do his job for his teammates. And I think that's one of the things that's going to make him a special player. I mean, this is just one page in the uh, – one chapter in the book about Anthony Richardson. You know, he, he has an opportunity. You know, he had one on Sunday. I told him, I said, look, get up Sunday morning, pick the pen up and write a great page in the chapter – uh, this part of your life and this part of your career. So, um, still a young player, you know, and um, I'm I'm excited to be a part of that, you know, and to observe that. You know, he's a special kid. Bill, you talked about earning the right to win a game. Would you define what you think is earning the right? I mean, that that's a it's a pretty cool statement, but right. what do you how do you define that? Well, I think it's about you know, kind of our formula to win. What's worked for us in the past, right? And uh, at the top of that list is own the ball, attack the ball, right? And, you know, if you just want to take a, a bird's eye view of the game, that's where we, you know, didn't earn the right to win. You know, if you include the turnover on down stat, we, we turned the ball over four times to their one, right? So we're minus three. Uh, we didn't play well on conversion downs on offense. Um, had to kick a couple field goals in the fringe. So the four-point play red zone part of the field, we weren't very efficient. So we didn't do enough on offense to win the game. You know, So um, when I say earn the right to win, I'm talking about our formula and how we win. We play complimentary football. Uh, and there were parts of our team where we didn't earn the right to win. It's, it's that simple. Well, Jeff's a football guy. You know, he's been in the football family his entire time. His dad, obviously, Brad Scott, was a phenomenal coach and a great mentor to me early in my career. Uh, but Jeff's got great character. He was raised the right way. Um, you know, he has care for young people. He's in the game for the right reasons. I think he's got a program there where they're trying to impact people uh, and use the game in a positive way. But He's got a great offensive mind. Uh, he's very organized, very much a CEO. Um, you know, got a good business mind, you know, and a guy that I think is one of the bright, you know, young coaches in the game. So Jeff's been successful at all stops here, right? Um, and certainly he's in the process of building a program there in South Florida. Brad was uh, – he was at Clemson as a coordinator assistant coach when I first got to Clemson as a graduate assistant. How, uh, how has that Jack Miller status uh, and uh, some of the other injuries, I guess, with Ventro and uh, – Yeah, Jack is making progress. Uh, he's not quite ready for action, uh, but he is in the process getting closer, right? He's kind of moved into the next stage there of uh, return to play. Uh, and as far as other injuries are concerned, we'll give you that update on Wednesday. That's coming along at this point. I thought we took a step forward in this past game. You know, I thought that some of the young players really, you saw week one to week two improvement. You think about for them in their career, it was game one to game two improvement. So uh, we're starting to get better play from some of that second tier. I thought Jervon in particular really was significantly better in the game, right? So and when I say that, I'm talking about alignment, eye discipline, fundamentals. Um, across the board there, we were much improved. In the first game about just kind of being jittery and his emotions getting to him, and then last Saturday he said after the game that his kind of his confidence got shot. Um, how much is that something that he still needs to work on, you work on with him, and just between the ears, moving on to the next play? Yeah, I think it's part of being a young player, you know. It's part of being a guy who's not very experienced. And I would say that um, – we're all that way, right? I mean, I, I, as a young coach, as a young position coach, you're that way, right? As a young play caller, you're that way. As a young head coach, you're that way, right? Remember when you were getting your start, right, in the profession, right? That's reality here. Anthony's a young player. He's getting his first opportunity to be the guy. So I just think this is part of the story. This is part of his growth. Um, and he'll, he'll use that. I mean, th this guy's a competitor, Man, he's motivated. 
Uh, and I think he'll he's going to take full advantage of the experience he's had, both good and bad so far. And, I, and again, it's important to evaluate each game and each performance and each play independent of the outcome. Are you doing everything that you were supposed to do the right way? Sometimes you get a great outcome and you didn't do what you were supposed to do, right? Sometimes we sacked the quarterback and we busted the coverage over here and, and we, we could have gave up a touchdown. So sometimes I think in this game, you can get too consumed with the result. Uh, what you got to do is control the things that you can control, get consumed with preparing, and go execute and do your job for the team. Right there, but you've talked a lot about operating in truth. Um, what does that look like? How important is that for the players, especially coming out coming off a loss, you know, just not lying to themselves about something within the game? Well, it goes back to really evaluating the game independent of the result. You know, I mean, is the effort good, right? Is the fund Are the fundamentals good? Is the communication where it needs to be, right? Um, if we're having execution issues, why, right? I think each individual player, each position group, each unit, right, what is each part of the organization relative to preparing for the game throughout the week, right? I mean, so many people contribute to a football team, right? So a loss gives you a chance to hit the reset button, recenter. Everybody kind of gets hit in the gut, and I think sometimes it's healthy. So uh, the key is that you don't waste it, right? And that's when I say operate in truth. I say, hey, just let's call it exactly like it is, right? What caused us? to get the result that we had there. And what can we do to uh, position our team, you know, myself, what do we need to do to help position the team for success in the future? Most of Anthony's struggles were opponent dictated Saturday night? That's a tough question to answer there. Um, I think a lot of Anthony's issues are he can fix. Right. And I would say that most football games are that way to some degree. You know, now occasionally you're going to run into a really good player in a matchup. Um, you're going to have a matchup issue um, one side of the ball, the other on special teams. But most games are lost. That's reality. You know, so um, I think the big thing here is there's lots of plays where he can do better. And there's lots of places where a lot of players on our team can do better, right? I mean, I think Anthony is the quarterback, right? So everybody likes to talk about the quarterback. But every player on the team uh, can do better, right? There's certain players that played better than others, and they know who they are. But um, I think that what I see is all very correctable. Now, uh, there are a handful of plays, four or five plays in the game, where we didn't, we didn't put the players in a sound concept, right? And that when I come back in and I'm evaluating the staff, that's what I'm looking at, right? Are we in a sound play? Do we, when we walk in the room today, do we have the answer? We could say, hey, if we'd have done this, we'd have been fine, right? And, you know, a few too many of those in the game for me, four or five, that's too many. I don't want any of those, right? So, um, but I, I do think that there's opportunity for Anthony to play well in the game, you know, if, if he executes at a higher rate. Some of that has to do with other players around him playing better. And I think that's usually the case. When he plays good, it probably has to do with the players around him playing well, too. That number is zero. Do you win that game? Instead of four or five? Uh, probably not. Yeah. I think that we made a few too many mistakes, right? Um, not only did we turn the ball over, they were significant. They were immediate points, right? So those are... There's a compound effect of that. Those turn into seven. Most turnovers, on average, translate to about three points, right? If you just do the research, when they go, when they're seven, right, or lead to seven, you know, there's a compound effect of that and the momentum that comes from that, right? So, uh, you think about, I think it's 16 to seven, three minutes to go in the second quarter on the first one. Then it's a tie game in the third quarter there with the second one. So those, if we don't have that, we don't have the fourth downs that we're going for. We don't end up, we're, in, we're playing with a lead and the game's completely different. So um, got to earn the right to win, right? And turn the ball over 
that's not part of the equation. Time for one more. You've talked a lot about the family approach uh, in, and environment and as well as handling adversity. When that was tested on Saturday, how do you feel the team responded, uh, especially when it comes to supporting Anthony? No, I mean, I couldn't be better. You know, I think um, I can't compliment the guys enough on that. They, they, they've been great, you know. I think that sometimes the kids are more resilient than the adults are, you know, truth be known. So, but uh, this group is How you guys doing? Good, good to finally see everybody in person, <laughs> not on Zoom. guys kind of move past that performance I was asking Billy I mean they're going to be some growing pains with the first year staff quarterback in his third start uh, absolutely I'd say uh, definitely taking a loss you know is a hard thing for everyone you know I couldn't even sleep at night honestly and I still have that bad taste in my mouth but it's a new week and I feel like our main goal is to go one and no each week you know that's the goal and we weren't able to get that done last week but I feel like um, in order to have success, you have to fail as well. So we were able to go back and watch the film and see, really see what we all did and the mistakes we made because it was really like the simple stuff that we, that we really could have, you know, fixed up. So um, I say we just went went back to the drawing board and now we're just going to focus on, um, you know, this next game going one and that, that's the goal every week. Can you just pinpoint maybe one or two things that you feel like or ne you guys really need to make strides? Um, uh, I'd say really, like, we could look at all aspects of the game, you know, literally, like, every aspect. Like, we can go in there and you can watch the film. You can see, okay, there was a small mistake we made here. We had a misassignment here, you know, like, uh, I could have got an open there. I could have read the coverage better there. So it's just small stuff. And we just really just need to go back and just go and practice and just work hard and, you know, just really come together because when, whenever we're all coming together, you know, we just play so much better. Term, uh, losing confidence on Saturday in terms of, you know, as the game went on. As a veteran, how do you try to restore his confidence this week? 
Um, I would definitely say um, confidence is built in repetition. So I'd say in practice, you know, going out there every day, just really giving and giving it your all in practice, you know, even though we did lose, you know, last week, just really focusing on a brand new week and just really just trying to go one and up every day and just trying to win that every day in practice, every rep going hard because I get to go up against Jason Marshall, you know, every single day in practice and Devin Moore and they make me 10 times better, 50 times better. So it's just really just taking it rep by rep and just going um, as hard as you possibly can. Struggle on Saturday. Sorry, say again. Uh, what did, was your assessment on why the pass game kind of struggled on Saturday? Um, I would say um, we were just kind of maybe just off a little bit, you know. Um, but I say it's a brand new week again. You know, we're focused on this next game. You know, one to know. Um, that's the goal each week. So we're just going to go out there and hopefully be able to put up huge numbers this week. That's the goal to really come back off of last you week. Talked about earning the right to win. What does that mean to you? Um, I would say earning the right to win, as you know, that starts in practice. You know. Um, just literally doing everything that you possibly can, being in this building as much as you possibly can, you know. Like, I, I try to live in here, you know. <laughs> Honestly, you know, we got this brand new locker room. I can go, I can sleep in there, you know, wake up. Just I say just really giving full effort to the team and just really trying to communicate and just get everyone together, you know, so that way we can just play as one. Anthony often throws a fastball, even on shorter and intermediate routes as receivers. How do you... How can you guys adjust to that? Um, I say uh, it's just, you know, second nature. You just got to just see the ball and just react to it, you know. It's just simple. But I'd say just that also starts in practice, you know, just reps, reps on reps on reps. You know, that's how you build confidence. And you, in game time, you don't even think of the ball just in your hand. Anthony was clearly pretty distraught afterwards. What, as a veteran, was your message to him? And what did you see from him in terms of a response? Um, I would say definitely, you know, um, all of us, you know, I, I feel like it just wasn't him. I feel like um, – we win as a team and we lose as a team. So everyone, we were just in the locker room trying to, you know, um, help each other out, you know, talk each other up and just stay positive because that's a big thing. Because, you know, like teams could lose games and just go down in a hole, but you could also lose and come back that next week and, you know, be 50 times better, you know. And it's just one loss, you know. There's a lot of uh, championship teams with one loss, you know. So we're just going to come back next week and try to put up huge numbers and really win. What does it say about him that he was so accountable? Um, that's the kind of guy he is, man. You know, he's a, he, he's a leader, hard worker. And he's obviously a special talent, as you guys have seen. He's very um, impressive quarterback. He makes some throws that in practice and games that I'm like, wow. And he's obviously out there running the ball. He, he can jump over people. But um, I definitely say just he's definitely um, definitely a very smart, very humble, humble, humble kid for the, the spot that he's in now. Have you think uh, so far of Trevor this season? And when did you realize that he was going to have a chance to make an impact? <laughs> He is, he is a different character. Um, he's a different, different, different person. Um, I would say definitely when he first got here for workouts over the summer, just watching him run and really seeing how he cuts and stuff like that, I was like, okay, like this is going to be special. And then when we finally got there in camp and he put the pads on, then it just proved, proved to everyone, you know, that he's that guy. Character in what way? Oh, he's just funny, man. He has a personality, you know. He just loves everyone that, that he's around. He's really like he'll, he'll walk in a room and be able to pick up everyone around. Everyone's going to know that, that, you know, he's um, in that room. Which is what you feel me, everyone needs. I feel like. You said Devin Moore was someone going oh, yeah. against him made you better. What have you seen out of him? I mean, he's already. Oh, he's. Playing. Um, I always call him um, um, Mr. Mr. Patient because he's he's very very patient, you know. And we go one on ones every day, you know. Just going out there seven on seven. Just I'm just so so thankful that I'm able to be able to go up against DBs to that caliber, you know, because it just makes me honestly better. Brought to the receiver room. <laughs> I love Ricky, man. That's my that's my brother, you know. And uh, he's he, he's been there for a, sh a short amount of time, but he's very very talented. He's he's probably one of the best receivers I've ever seen. Um, just what he can do, you know, and and his his work ethic speaks for itself, and you know that just adds on to everything else. So I can't wait to really see when he really gets to open up, you know, and do his thing. Well, what, you said one of the best receiver receivers you've ever seen. What qualities can you give a couple of? I say he has every aspect that you would want in a receiver. He's speed, he can beat you quick, beat you deep. He could jump over you, catch the ball, make three people miss and score a touchdown, and he's going to be screaming afterwards, he's jumping up, you know, celebrating with everyone. So I feel like that's the kind of guy he is, and you guys see that you know, in the game. He's making those crazy catches, you know. You see the speed, he blocks too. Great blocker, great, great blocker. He had some key blocks um, last game, so it's just good to see him really put that work in. and just You know, it's just he's a cool guy to be able to play with, you know. Devin, does that mean he's not jumping at your first move and you can't – you have to get deeper in the route before you commit? Or I'll, I'll n never forget my first time going one-on-one um, -on -one with him when he first got in. Um, and then I, I like, kind of, like, did a little move on him. He didn't do nothing. He just stood there. And I was like, okay. So, like, I know how to, how to 
play against him now. I just got to get out and go. But I just call him patient because, you know, and, and you can see it in the games, like people running slants on him. He just sits there, you know, holds tight. So I feel like that's a good trait for a defensive back to have. Absolutely, yeah. And reps too. Repetition helps. Ricky comes to, comes to the facility every day, 100 uh, catches with the jugs gun. Has that rubbed off on everybody, everybody coming early and, oh, yeah. and doing that too? I'd say definitely the culture in here has changed drastically. You know, I feel like um, now, like, you can go down there to the indoor facility and there's I, – I was just down there. There's probably – I think I saw eight guys in there, linemen, running backs, running, doing drills, linemen, snapping balls, doing steps back, kids over there catching jugs. I just think I saw Bowman uh, – Bowman, Dejon Reynolds, and uh, Daniel Cross, and I was just down there catching Jason. So I was sweating a little bit. But, um, you know, um, it's just work. So I feel like it's just definitely rubbing off, and we're going to be a great team. You said the whole culture. So everything in the building has changed about everybody from last year? Um, I'd say definitely uh, there's more of a, of a hunger to be great. And um, I feel like we, like, know what to do, like, step by step to take that. And that's thanks to Coach Napier and his new coaching staff, you know. And obviously having this brand new – you know, places definitely helping us a lot to keep us motivated and just really have us work hard. How's the gym and the coaching machine, your mom? <laughs> Amazing. Cat still throws me every single day. We had caught earlier today. So, and then tonight I'm going to catch again because I feel like I didn't do everything I could last game to help us win. So, so what's that? I mean, it's just, I love hearing it every time. So, what's that process again? 250 balls every single day, probably more because we use um, tennis balls now. But uh, I go in there. She has a. Uh, we we we'll either go to a field outside, like like today we were outside because it's 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 hot outside. So I want to be able to sweat, you know, get get a good workout now. But I'll be tired afterwards, and she'll be sweating too. So it, it's a good workout for both of us. But it gets me better. And she has a cannon now. She could she could really zip it. <laughs> she tennis balls to you now? Oh yeah, everything, man. Okay. Yeah, she does everything. She really helps me out. I knew I knew she got the balls. I didn't know if she was throwing the tennis balls. Got time for a few more guys. Good, good. I know my uh, dad, when I was younger, he used to throw to me all the time when I was younger. And now it's just like shoulders starting to get a little messed up. So, so then she she took over and she has a cannon. <laughs> she could dot it up now, I ain't going to lie. Paula Shorter. Yeah, Paula. That's Paula Shorter. She looks just like me. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> What are your thoughts on how things have kind of gone for you guys offensively from an operational standpoint? Because it's one thing to practice in a new system, but it's another to actually play it. You've seen it for two games now. Mm -hmm. So, like, what, what are your thoughts on just how everything's kind of gone? Um, I'd say definitely um, I love how we prepare, and I, I love uh, the, the play calls when we're in the game, you know, and, like, um, I, don't, I don't have a problem blocking, you know, for the running backs. We have a – we have all, all those running backs back there are great. We have a quarterback that can run it, and all our wideouts can go deep and really take the top off. So I really say we use all aspects in our offense, and I feel like this is the third game, so we're going to be able to start to master it now even more, and we'll be able to, you know, run and run and run and throw, throw it deep, you know. So it's just really just reps, and we, it all starts in practice, you know, just getting more consistent. A focus for receivers over the offseason? Um, I'd say just um, as important as catching the ball, honestly. You know, um, every day in um, Indy, uh, Coach Casey has us doing some kind of blocking drill with him. Um, he's out there with his cleats on trying to make, make a move on us like like a real game. So it definitely helps us out a lot in the game because you definitely see it carry over. And all we only ask you about Ricky a lot when it, talks, when it comes to additions, but Ty Chalk, Yale Bowman got a target in the game. Just what have you seen out of him? He, he, he is, he is. He's like a like a jackrabbit. He's just he's like every time he touches the ground, he has the ball. He's like he's just super fast, super quick guy. Great hands, confident. So I can't wait to really see him get get more time out there. So he can really show everyone what he could do too. Because when the ball's in in his hand, like every time in practice, like whenever he will catch the ball, he's he scores. Not blinking, he's sprinting towards the end zone. So that's the kind of guy he is. Thank you guys. Something like that. <laughs> I mean, what about Paula Shorter, my gosh? Did you hear what he was saying? Yeah. Calling her fast and get ready, homie. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> How about you, Mike? All right, guys. Well, we're joined by Richard Garage. We'll open up questions. How are you, Mike?
evaluate offensive line play week one to week two? Uh, every day we're just trying to get better, um, 1% better every day. I know um, last week we didn't, it wasn't go as planned. Um, tomorrow we have a we have a new opportunity to keep to keep getting better. What do you think of Richie's performance coming in there? Um, a good bit of left guard. With Richie is a great ass, great ass asset for the team. Um, having him uh, rotate in the in the in the offensive line has definitely uh, helped us and stuff like that. And um, he's just a great asset for the team. When you, when you say last week didn't go as planned, what specifically didn't click that maybe clicked week one? You think? Uh, we just had a. Uh, minor mistakes and stuff like that. Um, we we watching the film. We knew that um, there was some mistakes we could have definitely tweaked up and minor issues we can address. And this week is a new week to get better and uh, work on the little things. What's the key to keep keeping perspective? I mean, you guys are on top of the world after Utah. Now it's this. I mean, it's a pretty big emotional roller coaster for two weeks. How, how do you keep perspective and stay the course? Uh, just staying positive, just believing in, believing in one another. Uh, that every day, um, we just our end goal is just to win every game. I know last week was was pretty rough for everybody. Um, it's it's part of life. It was you got to learn, you got to lose in in order to win. So um, I know it sucks that we didn't win last week, and um, we have a new week for this week and to keep getting better. You're a veteran guy. How do you? impart that to Anthony? I mean, obviously he's played sports his whole life, he gets it, but he's still very young in the position. How, how do you kind of bolster him there? Uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's all part of life. I understand that Anthony has a lot of pressure and it sucks that uh, a lot of people put a lot of pressure on him. But I just know, uh, like a veteran guy, um, like for instance, Wani Taylor, he always told me like after he lost his games, he always just told me like, Next day is another day to keep getting better and better, and that always sticks with me. And I try to try to um, lend that to Anthony Richardson as well. And we just gotta try to keep getting better. Billy talks about earning the right to win. What does that mean to you? Earning the right to win. So we we have to follow the formula in order to win. Um, as long as everybody doing their job to 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 their full capacity, um, there there shouldn't be no doubt that we win and come as victory. Flush a loss like that because you know if, if you're not positive as you were saying things can snowball the way it kind of did last year too. Um, so, like I said, it's all part of life. Uh, you have to lose in order to win. Um, I'm just grateful that I have an opportunity that the guys are willing to look at the film and see that the minor mistakes they they saw and um, just brush it off and hopefully next week when we can come out with a big victory. Talked about the entire culture of the team has changed. Would you talk about that? Oh, uh, the culture definitely has changed. I know a lot of guys on this team definitely bought into the system. They believe in coach, um, the system that he's that he um, has for us, and everything he is doing is we definitely believe in his formula and everything. What's the difference between now and last year? Uh, last year worked for them. I mean, last year worked for. We just had the – I don't know how to explain it. Last year, we was bought in, and this year is just a new just a new system that we just have to buy in. And um, everybody just – everybody overall goes just to win. What did Kentucky do to early on to kind of take you guys out of what you wanted to do? Well, uh, Kentucky didn't really do it. I mean, Kentucky played a great game. Uh, kudos to them. Um, we like, – like I said, we saw in the film that – we we had similar we had minor mistakes and um, we just have to get back on the field and go back to practice and just keep getting better. It seemed like you guys had better success running outside than inside. I don't know what went into that from a blocking scheme standpoint. Why you were successful rushing on the edge and maybe why you weren't as successful rushing up the gut. Um, it was just all part of whatever the defense gave us and what what Coach Napier believed that um, that was going to work and we just wanted to execute as best as we can. Starting role. Uh, Austin stepped up big time. Uh, I knew that. I knew he was. I knew he was the guy and stuff for like that. And um, I just. I. I had no doubt that he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't ready at all to play this game. Uh, I'm just glad that he contributed a great way. That was. And another young player, uh, Trevor Etienne, 
What did you realize that he was going to be a special player and, and make an impact for you guys as a freshman? Oh man, I remember in camp, um, he was my roommate. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm looking on the, I'm looking on the iPad. Excuse me, I'm looking on the iPad. I'm like, man, this man, this man, good right here. And I'm seeing it like face to face, going, going, going crazy in the game, and it's, it's. It's great to see that young young players buying into the system and then taking coaching. So he's been doing great. He's a character. What was he like as a roommate? Uh, that man's loud. That man can snore. Uh, I remember one time, man. I'm five in the morning. He set his alarm because he's he's a he's a hard sleeper. So he set his alarm. I got to wake up at like seven, so I wanted two more hours of sleep. This man phone going off. I'm like, man, what are you doing? Over like tossing, he's still sleeping. Like, leave me alone. I'm like, all right, man, come on, like, turn your alarm off. But other than that, other than that, he's just he's a great he's a great kid. He's willing he's willing to learn. Um, I'm just glad to have him as a teammate. I think somebody said coming from Louisiana, this feels like New York City to him. Oh yeah, man, it's he talks crazy loud. He's just I don't know. He's he's just a little character. Anthony had his coming out party last year against USF. Yep. Now a year later facing USF again. Where have you seen him grow the most, the most growth in him? Uh, I've seen it since January when the first staff came in, um, buying into the system, but believing in Coach Napier that he'll put him in a great position. Um, I knew that, I knew from the beginning that he was going to have good strides this year. And I've seen in the summer how he hold guys accountable, hold himself accountable. And um, yeah. Game last year, those those. Do you remember Anthony? Is that what you remember? When Which you take one? away that USF game. USF. Uh, I just remember that we just came out with a victory last year. Yeah, they won three. Represent for the, for the city, man. It was a great plan for the, old, the hometown. How many guys uh, at USF do you know? Um, I know one, probably uh, Donovan. He played left tackle. Other than that, then nobody else. Really. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me.